Are you out of batteries? Feeling a little tired? Like you could use a little more energy? Well, this dazzling mineral might have just what you're looking for. Lithium. Welcome to Every Rock Has a Story. My name is Sam, and this is the rock for today. And I see it's purple, and it has these weird shapes. And I wonder why does it like have these lines in the back? Hey, Ethan, can you tell me more about this rock? Thanks, Sam, for introducing this rock to everybody today. Now, Sam noticed that beautiful pink-purple color. And these lines are striations right along the front. And on the back, she noticed these almost splintery shapes and fractures. Now, the flat sides and that pointy top are there because this is a real crystal. A crystal of a mineral called spodumene. And this isn't just any old spodumene either. This is a gem quality spodumene. So we can also call this kunzite. Now, this incredible kunzite spodumene comes from Afghanistan. I had to buy this one. Spodumene usually grows inside igneous rocks called pegmatites. We talked about pegmatites back at episode 34. And pegmatites carry some special ingredients that allow for minerals like our spodumene here to grow. Now, I also noticed that Sam was a little tired. Maybe she ran really fast at recess and she's just pooped. Out of gas. Just out of batteries, as they say. Well, it turns out that this rock might just have what she needs. Or, I guess, just what a real battery needs. That's why I call this my battery rock. And batteries store energy. Oh, and all these other rocks and minerals here today, these have something in common with our spodumene. They all contain critical minerals that we need for our modern society. Now, I have a geologist friend, and she is exploring for this critical battery rock all over the world. Let's go see where she is now and find out what she's doing. Hey, Catherine. Hi, Ethan. Nice to see you. How nice. are you? I'm great. Thanks for being here, everybody. I'm with Catherine Goodenough. Catherine is a geologist who works for the British Geological Survey. And Catherine, we were checking out this amazing crystal back in the studio. I bet you know what this is. Ethan, that's beautiful. That's a beautiful gem quality spodumene. I knew she'd know what this was. So this is really important because this is the type of mineral that we would use as the ore for lithium. And of course, lithium is the absolutely critical ingredient of the batteries that we need for so many things in our modern world. So even though this is a pink rock, what we're going to learn about today is that this battery rock, this lithium rock, is the key to our green energy future. Is that right? That's absolutely right. Without lithium, we're not going to have batteries to power all our electric vehicles, for example. You've taken us here today. Where are we exactly? Well, we're in Sweden. We're in the town of Bergby. And we've come here because we can go and see what it's like exploring for lithium. We're going to see some real life spodumene in the wild. All right, take us there. Let's do it. Let's go. All right. <laughs> uh -huh. Now, Ethan, mm. this is what we're looking for. Yeah, I guess so. There's a really interesting story to tell you here. Okay. Because about 15 years ago, some geology students, some university students, yeah. they came here, they were doing some mapping work, but they found boulders like this. And they looked at these boulders and thought, it's a white rock, right. but it's got some big crystals in it, and they're greenish yeah. if you look at them. And they thought, well, what are these crystals? So they took a sample back to their university, checked it out with their professor, and they're crystals of spodumene. That's spodumene. That's yeah, I spodumene. recognize some of it, but it's totally different. I mean, compare the two colors. Here we've got this beautiful our lilac colored spodumene here. This is kind of this sort of drab gray green color. So 
But of course, what you're holding in your hand is a gem quality spodumene. Right. Really amazing crystal. But that's not what we're going to be mining when we're mining lithium for batteries. We're going to be mining these kind of rocks. This is a spodumene pegmatite. And the spodumene in that doesn't look as pretty but it's still got the lithium in it and that's what we need for the green future. So at first, not so much happened, but of course recently we've realized just how much lithium we're gonna need for batteries, for electric vehicles. Uh, and so there's been much more interest in exploring for lithium and trying to identify lithium deposits. So in the last couple of years, a company called United Lithium has been here uh, doing some exploration work, trying to understand how much lithium there is in the ground here. And what they've realized is there's a lot more than just these few boulders. There's some outcrops that we can go and take a look at if you like. I'd love to do that. Let's go, it's just over here. Oh, fantastic, let's do it. So Catherine, how did you get interested in the geosciences in the first place? Well, Ethan, you know, when I was a kid, I was good at science, yeah. but what I really liked was being outdoors. I mean, right. Why wouldn't you, eh? It's and, true. And so I got really interested in geology because I thought that's going to be the chance to do science but to stay outdoors much of the time. And so I did a degree in geology, I uh, did a PhD, and in my PhD I got to go to Greenland. Greenland? So that was pretty cool. Is there lithium there too? Do you know, I was working on rare earth elements, Ethan. Really? That's another story. But then from there I went on uh, and I got a job working for the British Geological Survey. And with BGS, I really do get to go all over the world. And you've been prospecting for the BGS, looking for not just lithium, but other things as well. What are some of the places that you've been looking for lithium? Well, for lithium, I've been to some really brilliant places, actually. I've been to Brazil, that wow. was super cool. Uh, Zimbabwe, Whoa. which is an amazing place to visit. But the reason that we're here in Sweden is because I'm working uh, with European colleagues on a project that is looking at different methods for exploring for lithium. And the company that's working here is one of the partners in that project. So that's what's brought us to Sweden and these beautiful forests. Well, it is a beautiful place to do geology. Let's keep going, all right? Yeah, let's keep going. Ah. <laughs> so here we are, Ethan. Yeah. We were looking for rock outcrops because of course we've seen a boulder. Right. But boulders can come from anywhere, they can move. Right, and this place was entirely glaciated 10 or 20,000 years ago. Exactly, exactly. So those boulders could have traveled. So we have to find the actual rock and look what we've got here. This is the stuff, isn't it? This is the real stuff. Look at that, we've got huge, great big spodumenes in there. Look at the really size of those. Tw 20 centimeter crystals, absolutely fantastic. So now we know we've got our lithium pegmatites actually outcropping right here but we don't really know there's trees all around us yeah so we don't really know how far it extends we don't know how deep these lithium pegmatites go into right. the ground so of course now there needs to be another step in exploration and that means drilling drilling All right, Catherine, this is incredible. We just saw this drill rig in action and this is the core coming out of the rig. This is fantastic, isn't it? And this is really important in terms of mineral exploration, looking for that lithium that we're gonna need. Of course, it's a lot of work to build up that three-dimensional model of what's going on underneath our feet. Yeah. That's the job of mineral exploration and that's the first step in being able to mine the lithium that we need to make the batteries that are going to enable that green future. Amazing. And I guess one of the important next steps is to make sure that we find a way to collect all this lithium. How do we get this stuff out in that sort of sustainable way? Do you know, it's really interesting, Ethan, because here we are, we're standing in a forest. Yeah. And of course, 
This is timber. This would have been a resource that was used for transport in the past. Right. But now the lithium is the resource we need for transport. And of course, mining that lithium has to be done in the best way possible. But we're here in Sweden, in a country where mining is really well regulated and monitored. And if this develops into a mine, that's going to be a really clean, well-managed, uh, well-regulated mine and that's what's really important. We cannot have the energy transition without mining. It's another story that rocks can tell and sometimes those stories are even about our future. Um, I know that I can't take any of the core that actually came out of the drilling today but I noticed some scraps um, and I believe that these scraps that they're throwing away, I could take these home, right? Back to the studio? You could, absolutely. You can take those with you. I'm going to take these home. Catherine, thank you thank so, you much so much Ethan. for being part of Every Rock Has a Story. We'll see you guys back in the studio. Lithium! This rock is lithium ore. And here is some of that drill core that came from underground as those geologists were exploring for more and more of that battery rock. Now, I'd like to bring back Sam to see what she thinks of the story. Hey, Sam. So now that Catherine has told the story, what do you think? I'm, I think it was cool. What is lithium? All right, so lithium is a very specific and very special ingredient that you can find in certain special rocks, like this crystal of spodumene. And lithium also has some very special electrical properties that can be used to help store energy. So if we can get the lithium out of the spodumene, we can use it to make batteries. And you know what batteries do, right? It's a, like a small thing where it's full of energy and you put it in like a toy. Right, and what you said is really important. Batteries are full of energy. And that energy could really come from any place. What are some of the ways you know where we can get energy? Food. Uh, yes, absolutely. Animals and people get our energy from, from eating food. Uh, let me ask you this. Where do plants get their energy to grow? The sun. Correct. So energy from food, energy from the sun. And here's another question. What about a car? What gives a car its energy? Gas. Exactly. You put gasoline in the car, that burns in the engine, and that makes the car go. Now. Have you ever heard of these new electric cars? Teslas. Yes. In fact, our camera crew in Sweden, they were driving a Tesla the whole day through the forest. And how does a Tesla get its energy? Battery. You got it. And those batteries are made of lithium and a few other things. And that lithium comes from this mineral called spodumene. Sam, it's been great having you on Every Rock Has a Story. Bye. Throughout the 82 episodes of Every Rock Has a Story, we've explored a whole bunch of rocks and minerals that humans mine for the needs of our modern society. Each one of these critical resources has its own very human story based on our needs, but none of it would be possible without energy. Energy is what makes things go. And episode 16 was all about this rock, coal, which is a form of fossil energy, a real fossil fuel. And that coal has made so much possible in our society over the years. But Catherine kept on talking about the energy transition. Catherine knows we need to transition to renewable sources of energy, things like wind, water, and solar power. And that's where our battery rock comes in. We're going to have to mine lots and lots of lithium to make batteries to store that energy to power our electric vehicles, our cell phones, and more as this green energy transition moves forward. Season four was all about life's relationship with the Earth. We started with fossils, the ancient life of planet Earth, and the people who discovered them. We saw how today's scientists work together to unlock the stories of the past. We saw examples of how human life is impacting the planet today and how scientists are working not only to diagnose those problems, but also to provide solutions for a more sustainable future. Yeah, life's relationship with the Earth sure has evolved. And you will play a role in how it continues to evolve in the future. I want to thank Catherine, Sam, 
and all the kids and co-hosts from season four for sharing their stories. I hope you've learned something about your own place on the earth and about your own relationship with the rocks and minerals all around us. Bye-bye. So what I wanted to show you was some of the most famous rocks on the Jurassic Coast. It's these ones. Oh my goodness, Angina. I can see why you brought us here. You guys, this is the Jurassic Coast. It's incredible, isn't it? Hey, Ethan, come check this out. What do you got? It's got a whole big section of this ancient ocean floor. Oh, man, look at that. Look at all the shells in this. Oh my goodness, so you guys, we're about to find out right now if there's actually something inside that egg. <laughs> Steph, where do we go now? Next is a super cool bit. We're going to the laser. An argon plasma is very hot. It's about 10,000 degrees. It's hotter than the surface of the sun. Hotter than the surface of the sun? That's right. You guys, that's hot. So, Ethan, this is the freezer. We have ice from Everest, from the South Pole, from Europe, and from Denali, where I'm working. So this is actually my ice core. Wow. And what water does is it actually gives us the memory of the rock itself and all the chemical ingredients that we find in the water is coming from its interaction with the rock. And what they do is that they, the clay is molded and it is pretty much uh, uh, shaped in the shape of something like this, brick, and then the, the, the rock clay is then heated using coal. Oh. So, yes. And if you look at a lot of communities around the world, they have a lot of kelvin deposits. So we're thinking about how can we use what is locally available to make a product like this water filter to help people in the community to get clean drinking water. Lithium!